Hi everyone, thank you very much for stopping by and returning to the old world. Today we're talking about the loss of the magic phase. So what's happened? Well, Games Workshop have said that it will be ditching the magic phase. It will not be part of Warhammer Old World. Instead, spells will be cast throughout the turn. A similar change as to one that was made in 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000. So why has this been so controversial? Well, the magic phase has long been part of Warhammer Fantasy. Effectively a minigame based on the tactical use of power and dispel dice or cards where players sought to either get their most important spells off or minimise the advantage their opponent was getting. And over time this developed from a card system to one where each wizard had their own pool of dice which they could use for their own personal spells to one where the army had a single pool of dice and the number of dice in it was determined by the power level of all of the wizards that made up the army. So where is the issue here? Well, by 10th edition, the tactical nuance when it came to using spells had been somewhat diminished. So each law of magic that wizards had access to included normally an incredibly powerful spell that you needed to roll a lot on on your dice in order to get off and you were allowed to cast uh, a spell with generally up to six dice there was also a bonus for the level of the wizard so if you had a level four wizard you'd ask uh, add four to your dice roll for example what this led to particularly with the rise of hordes etc and other game mechanics was the magic phase became really about throwing as many dice as you could at the biggest spell that you could and hoping that amongst all of those dice would be a double six because if you got double six your opponent couldn't stop the spell and it went off and some of these spells were absolutely devastating now was there a tactical element in selecting the right target etc yeah absolutely but six dice for the win does not make people the new napoleon in saying this, I think it's important to recognise, though, that six dice for the win, it's the thing everyone remembers, and it's kind of the meme from 8th edition, but it wasn't exclusively true that this was the way it was done. It was possible to put combinations of smaller buffs and debuffs together to get local advantages, to win that decisive combat, to get the important advantages in movement or whatever. So it wasn't just about the Doom spells, but that's the thing people remember, and also it was, they were the big game-changing things, the big spell cast irresistibly that wipes out a key unit, nothing you can do about it, and the game is lost. It's one of those bad-feeling sort of moments in the game. Now, the noise online since the announcement from Games Workshop does suggest that people enjoyed the tactical minigame, the trying to bait out the dispel dice in order to get off the spells they really wanted to achieve and things like that. I think what people really had the issue with, which is the same as my issue with magic, was it could just be ridiculously powerful and I don't didn't like the game-changing nature of it and the way that it forced you to play so heavily into the magic phase when putting your army together. Now looking at the developer diary, it's important to recognise the fact that we don't know the detail of how magic is going to work, beyond the fact that we're not looking at pools of dice and we're not looking at a magic phase. So I suspect it is going to work in one of two ways. Either wizards will throw 2d6 at a spell and each spell will have a power level you need to equal or beat it. There'll be a limited chance for wizards on the other side to try and dispel that effort. So again, that's a, a bit of a, like a ninth ed 40k kind of thing. The alternative is what we'll see is wizards just having abilities. A magic missile will be effectively a gun Abilities will just be pick a unit, this happens, 
or an aura where units within X of the wizard, something happens to them. I suspect it's probably going to be more along the lines of the 2D6 thing, because I think Games Workshop will want to introduce an element of jeopardy in casting spells so that things potentially could go very, very wrong for the wizard. They are trying to channel huge, huge forces here that certainly for Empire Wizards that at the time they're not being trained in the Colleges of Magic, they don't really understand what's going on, they're just able to do it. Um, so it's so a crack on, really. Now I can fully see why people don't like this and why they're thinking removing the mini game of the power dice, the dispel dice, is going to take something away from the game. And it may well do. From a personal perspective, I think if spells are going to become shorter ranged and are perhaps going to have more of a local significance, then there will be more of a tactical significance to where wizards are moved and how they're moved and how they're used overall, rather than just burying them in a big block of infantry to keep them safe. They might need to be used a bit more riskily, um, in order, if that's even a word, in order to have them in the right place at the right time in order to use their abilities. I mean, for myself, to be honest, all I asked for for Warhammer or when it comes to Magic is that the power of wizards is reined in. I don't really want a game where they're so powerful that the first name on the team sheet is your level 4 Sorcerer Lord because if you don't have one, you're in trouble. A game that encourages different ways of playing the armies, greater tactical flexibility... Yes, some armies are very much going to be dependent on magic. I imagine Tomb Kings will be one of them, for example, because, let's face it, it's magic that keeps everything on its feet and in the fight. They're bound to be powerful wizards as part of that. But if I play an Empire army, I don't want to have to base my army around a really powerful wizard. I'd like to be able to have other characters, maybe combat characters and things like that just to let me play the game in different ways and have a bit of variety. So there we are, the controversy of the loss of the magic phase and my spin on that. If you've enjoyed the video, do consider liking and subscribing. It all helps for a small channel. All that remains for me to say is thank you very much for listening. I am Return to the Old World. Have a great day.